What's going on guys? Sharpshaw here. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. So for today's video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 worst survivor perks in Dead by Daylight. Usually you wouldn't be doing a top 10 on the worst perks, but the best perks. But I thought it'd be a good idea to actually show you guys what I think the worst survivor perks are in DVD so that you can make sure to steer clear from them and never use them in any of your builds. So quickly before we get into the video, I'm going to be going from number 10 to number one, and it's going to be going from best to worst. So number one, is going to be the absolute worst perk in the game and trickling down to number 10 is going to be the best of the worst perks if that makes any sense for each perk i'm going to be explaining what it does and why i think it's in the place that it's in so yeah without further ado let's get right into the video coming in at number 10 we have visionary visionary lets you see the aura of all generators within 32 meters of you and has a cooldown every time a gen is finished this perk is pretty decent information when you're starting out and you have no idea where the gens actually are but but once you start actually playing Dead by Daylight more and more, you're going to be able to find gens a lot quicker on your own. And in all honesty, gens are super, super hard to find. So running this perk, you're probably going to save yourself maybe 10 seconds to go to a new gen. You can literally just look with your eyes to find gens. You don't need a perk to do that. Coming in at number nine, we have Premonition. Premonition gives you an auditory warning when you're looking in the direction of the killer within 36 meters in a 45 degree cone. And every time you get an auditory warning you have a cooldown in a world where spine chill exists i don't really understand why anybody would actually want to run this perk because spine chill does the same thing premonition does but there's no cooldown and it gives you bonus action speeds which premonition doesn't do if spine chill is not an option for you this perk is pretty decent information because you get to know in the general direction where the killer is as i said before you should always run spine chill over this it shouldn't be an issue getting spine chill because they're both perks that are unlocked on all survivors coming in at number eight we have this is not happening when you're injured the great skill check zones get increased up to 30 percent at tier 3 this perk isn't super useful because you have to actually be injured to get any use out of it and the 30 percent doesn't actually increase the skill check bar it just takes away from the good skill check bar so the skill check is going to be the same size it's just that the great skill check is going to be a little bigger one could say it does help you get great skill checks which will make the repair progress faster but you can get great skill checks on your own and this doesn't increase it by that much so you don't really need this perk to get great skill checks all i need to do is just practice and try and get great skill checks on your own coming in at number seven we have wake up once all of the generators have been completed you get to see the aura of the exit gates within 128 meters and once you're actually opening the exit gates at tier three you can do that 15 percent quicker and your aura is revealed to all other survivors that you're actually opening the exit gate this perk can come up pretty clutch in solo queue granted did seeing the exit gate isn't really that useful but the extra 50 percent can mean the difference between life and death if you're the last survivor alive and the killer is patrolling each exit gate and if there are multiple survivors alive in the match having them see your aura when you're opening it is good for communication but with that being said this perk is only useful if you actually get to finishing all five generators and at that point you shouldn't really need the extra 15 percent to escape and having the other survivors see your aura isn't that useful either so if you don't even survive to get to the exit the case and this perk serves no use to you whatsoever coming in at number six we have no one left behind after an exit gate has been opened no one left behind lets you unhook and heal survivors up to 50 percent quicker at tier three the auras of all the survivors are revealed to you and you also get a hundred percent bonus blood points at tier three for doing altruistic actions this perk might seem good at the surface because of the bonus blood points and the bonus action speeds but in reality you have to have the exit gates open to have this perk even in effect the only situation where this perk would actually be of use is when a survivor is hooked when the exit gate is open at that point it isn't really useful to see the survivor's auras because you should already know where they are and the bonus blood points you're going to get are so minimal the bonus action speeds of 50 percent aren't going to be really of use in the end not to mention that usually when you're trying to go back for survivors and stuff like that you don't even want to open the exit gate in the first place so it's kind of counterproductive in a sense and if you're opening the exit gate you you should already be escaping so you really won't get any use out of this coming in at number five we have poised after a gen is completed you don't leave behind any scratch marks for 10 seconds at tier three this perk isn't super useful because when you complete a generator two things are going to happen either you're going to finish a gen and the killer's going to be nowhere near you so that 10 seconds isn't going to be of use at all or you're going to finish a gen right in front of the killer and those scratch marks won't help you at all it's really rare for you to get any use out of your hidden scratch 
sparks here so it's not that useful of a perk coming in at number four we have slippery me slippery me gives you three extra chances to self unhook and the chance of each self unhook is increased by four percent after doing the math you should get a 39 percent chance of unhooking yourself using all of your six escape chances so the fact that if you're trying to unhook yourself you're only going to be able to do so four out of ten times you try it and the other six times you just go straight into your second hook in your struggle phase this is terrible odds and you should never run this perk because 60 percent of the time this perk hurts you rather than doing good and other than if you had deliverance you shouldn't really be trying to unhook yourself you should be waiting for another survivor to get you so this is again another counterproductive perk coming in at number three we have no mither this infamous meme perk lets you suffer from the broken status effect meaning that you can't be healed out of the injured state the entire game so you're just injured and one shot the entire game but with that being said with this terrible part you also have no bleeding you get to recover from the dying state fully and at tier 3 your grunts of pain are reduced by 50% so on top of being exposed the entire game you basically get a mini iron will unbreakable and permanent lucky break regardless of that this perk is still terrible because again you're one shot the entire game which means that you won't be able to loop the killer at all your chases are going to end so much quicker and you're not going to be able to do any altruistic actions like unhooking someone because if the killer is near you at all they can just down you right on the spot this is a really dangerous and risky perk to run so if you're trying to rank up i would definitely not recommend using this perk but with that being said it's also one of the most fun perks to run so if you're just trying to have fun and you don't really care about your rank i would run this perk it's pretty fun coming in at number two we have up the ante you gain a token for each survivor that's alive in the trial and each token gives you three percent bonus luck at tier three for a maximum of nine percent this perk is just really bad because luck really doesn't do anything outside of having a greater chance of unhooking yourself the fact that it doesn't even consider you as an alive survivor and it only gives you up to a nine percent maximum luck increase is just terrible that's not even that high of a luck increase overall luck in dvd just isn't that useful so just don't run this perk coming in at number one we have borrowed time after unhooking a survivor with borrowed time they gain the endurance status wait you guys actually thought i was serious <laughs> All right, but in all seriousness, coming in at number one, we have Soul Survivor. Every time a survivor dies in the trial, you get a token up to a max of three when all survivors are dead. And at tier three, each token gives you 24 meters where the killer can't read your aura up to a maximum of 72 meters. Why anybody would run this perk mind boggles me because this perk is extremely counterproductive because it banks on survivors getting killed in a trial. And that's like the number one thing you do not want to have happen. You do not not want your survivors dying so a perk that benefits from survivors dying is just not a perk you want to run at all regardless of that the actual ability of the perk just muffles the aura reading of the killer which is really not useful at all because some killers can't even read the auras and some might not even run aura reading perks overall just definitely do not run this perk so yeah guys those are the top 10 worst perks in the game let me know in the comments what you guys think about this top 10 and what your least favorite perk in the game is for me it's definitely borrowed time <laughs> so yeah guys that's been the video thank you guys so much for watching leave a like and sharp subscribe if you're new this has been sharp shot and i will see you guys in the next video